Hey everyone, this is Jackie, and in this video, we'll learn how to construct a scientific argument, including how to identify the evidence, reasoning, and claim within that argument. The claim evidence reasoning framework is a framework that we use to think about explanations and arguments, and it will help you in the short term by improving your scores on lab write-ups, essays, and then exams, but also in the long term by equipping you with the skills necessary to navigate and make decisions using science in your daily life. But before we dive into the evidence reasoning claim framework, or ERC, let's talk about how science works in general. In science, what we're doing is we're gathering evidence through investigations of the natural world and then coming up with explanations that are critiqued over time. We need to use science to make informed decisions from everything from human health to education to massive issues like climate change. Without science and the evidence that comes with it, we'd be making uninformed decisions and working mainly from intuition. Here's an example. Imagine you had to take a new medicine, but that medicine had not been rigorously tested beforehand. What would the implications of that be? Would you be worried? One really important aspect of science and the scientific method is that our reasoning and claims can also change pretty frequently. If there's new evidence that refutes previous reasoning and claims, science gives us the freedom to change our minds. So without further ado, let's dive into ERC, or the Evidence Reasoning Claim Framework. ERC is a way to make our arguments or explanations more explicit. Within the ERC, you have a claim, which is your answer to the question being asked. Evidence is going to be the empirical data that you've gathered in the lab or given to you on an exam, and reasoning describes how the evidence is connected to the claim you're trying to make, such as why the evidence is relevant to the claim. In science, we want to make sure that our reasoning is based in some sort of scientific definition, concept, rule, or principle. So let's practice some of these skills. Let's say on an exam that we've asked the following question. Which of the following bonds is more polar? Justify your answer with evidence and reasoning. Let's start by gathering some evidence. What evidence would you need to come up with a claim? Here are some options. Correct. This evidence is relevant to the claim because we can determine the polarity of the bond by comparing the electronegativity values of the atoms in the bonds. Not quite. We're focused on bonds here, so evidence about the overall 3D structure wouldn't be too helpful as we make claims about the polarity of our bonds. Not quite. Polarity is about the relative distribution of electron density across a bond, so atom size doesn't really play much of a role here. Almost. Though we do need to know the electronegativity values, these on their own don't really tell us very much about the polarity of the bonds we're interested in. Awesome. So where we can start is we can look at the electronegativity values for each atom and the difference in electronegativity for each bond. And if we compare the electronegativity values of these atoms, we can come up with our claim. The CO bond is more polar than the CN bond. Now let's talk about the reasoning part. Remember that the reasoning is what really connects our evidence to our claim. And like I said earlier, we want our reasoning to be based in some sort of scientific definition, principle, or concept. So here's what I came up with for my reasoning. Bonds are more polar when there is a larger difference in electronegativity between bond and atoms, so the evidence indicates that CO bonds are more polar than CN bonds. Without this final reasoning part, we're really just listing numbers and coming up with a claim. The reasoning in our example allows us to articulate how we're connecting the difference in electronegativity values, the evidence, to the impact that has on the polarity of the bonds our claim. Let's try one more example. This time I want you to identify the reasoning that connects evidence to a claim. On the left we have our question. Will the equilibrium favor reactants or products? Justify why with reference to chemical properties of the conjugate bases and pKa values. Our claim in this case is going to be the equilibrium will favor the products. Our evidence in this case is oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. Oxygen is a smaller atom than nitrogen. The conjugate basis electrons are delocalized while the bases are not, and the pKa value of the conjugate acid is higher than that of the acid. So, given this information, which is the reasoning that connects evidence to the claim? 1. The equilibrium will always favor the side of the higher pKa value. 2. A higher pKa value indicates that the conjugate base for that acid is more reactive, so the equilibrium will favor the side of the more stable conjugate base. This is supported by the fact that the conjugate base's electrons are delocalized, which makes it more stable than the base. 3. Ethanoic acid is a strong acid that will react more readily than dimethyl ammonium. 4. A conjugate base with delocalized electrons and therefore a more dispersed negative charge will always be favored. Not quite. Remember, we need to connect the evidence and claim with reasoning based in scientific principles. In this case, we're simply stating a memorized rule, although pKa values. Not quite. Though ethanoic acid is a stronger acid than dimethyl ammonium, this statement does not tell us why the evidence supports the claim. Not quite. 
Remember, we need to connect the evidence and claim with reasoning based in scientific principles. In this case, we're simply stating a memorized rule about the localization that isn't always true. Correct. We've connected the PKA evidence to the claim using what we know about delocalization and stability. Let's summarize what we did today. In this video, you learned how to construct a scientific argument, which included identifying the claim, evidence, and reasoning within some arguments, and you also had some practice with these skills by deciding on what was appropriate evidence and reasoning for some chemistry questions. Remember, the ability to think about and construct arguments in terms of claim evidence and reasoning is not just going to be helpful for you on exams and lab reports, it's also going to be helpful for you as you make decisions in your life using scientific evidence. If you want more practice, you'll find a worksheet in the description that will give you some more practice with the skills we talked about today in this video. See you next time.